Hello everyone, welcome to the next video in survey. So in this video, we're going to dive into pretty much all of the integumentary system. So integumentary system is hair, skin, nail, and glands. Now we're mostly going to be focused on the layers of the skin and how it's organized. So we're just finishing up the histology and the skin is a good next step. Remember that the cutaneous membrane, the skin is a dry membrane. It's made up of an upper epithelial tissue and then a connective tissue in the dermis down below. All right, let's hop into this now. So here again, in the overview, we're gonna be going over the different cells and layers of the epidermis, then talking about the structures um, and layers within the dermis itself. And then we're gonna go through a model of the skin and label all of the layers like in a lab. All right, so first up here is the epidermis. When we talk about the epidermis, we're gonna also be talking a little bit about skin pigmentation. Now, just to show you where we're looking at, I'm actually gonna scroll down to this histology image here, and the epidermis is this pink layer right here. So this whole layer above this red line I'm drawing is the epidermis. So there are different cells as you work your way up through this epidermis. And down here is the skin model we're going to talk about later. And here is that same layer. So everything above that line is the epidermis. And you can see here, we have different layers that then can make up that epidermis. So epi is upon. Now let's look at the artistic representation here of what's going on. The first thing we have here is the dermis coming up in. So all the blood vessels would be found down in here. There are, the epithelial tissue is avascular, but it is innervated, meaning it has sensory information. And that's this Merkel cell right here. So this Merkel cell is a, um, a, a sensory neuron and any light pressure that pushes that will fire the sensory neuron and inform you of very, very light touch. Now, as you work your way up through the epidermis, there are a couple different layers we come across. Um, the first, the base layer, so they're all different, like strata is layer, so different stratums. This is the stratum basale, or the base layer here. The stratum basale, the first couple cells, it includes um, these melanocytes. A melanocyte produces something called melanin. Melanin is this pigment that makes your skin darker. Uh, melanin production increases due to the response to UV light, and its purpose is to actually absorb UV light to help prevent damage to your DNA. And so we'll talk about how different amounts of melanin production leads to different skin pigmentations coming up, but they're produced by melanocytes, package these little melanosomes, which are filled with that pigment melanin, and then they get packaged into these cells as they work their way up through. Um, so that's one big cell. There's also you know stem cells down here that give rise to new cells, and these are called um, keratinocytes. Keratinocytes are packed with a protein called keratin, and that's what give, makes your skin hard and resilient. Um, and here, so these keratinocytes packaged with keratin as they work their way up. And at this point down here in this um, basale layer, the cells are also still alive. They are nucleated because they're fed nutrients from down below here. Um, next layer we come up to is the stratum spinosum. This is where we have what are called prickle cells. And you see these little lines right here. When you look at these cells, they look prickly. Um, hence, hence the spiny or spinosum that's in this word. And those are actually little cellular extensions. So it's cell membrane coming out and forming desmosomes or anchoring junctions with the cells around it. And that's starting to then form the barrier that your epidermis forms for your skin. Also, you see some of these cells here are lacking a nucleus. So the nuclei are beginning to disintegrate here as they work their way up. The cells can still be somewhat alive, but then they work their way up. So that's that prickle layer. Now we get to the stratum granulosum. It gets this name granulosum because there are these lamellar granules in it which stain a darker blue color. These granules are packages of keratin, keratohyaline, um, and these melanin pigments that are being put into here. Um, so that's that granulosum layer. Next up is a layer that's only found in thick skin, which is the palms of your hands and the uh, soles of your feet. This is called the stratum lucidum or lucid, the clear layer. It's only a couple cell layers thick um, and it's only found in thick skin. And anything above this granulosum layer, these cells are considered dead at this point. Now, dead cells still preserve, still have a function 
the function is protection. Um, it's your aqueous barrier as well. You don't absorb water through your skin and you don't lose all your body fluids through your skin. So it's that surface barrier and has that hydrophobic function to it because cell membranes are all lipids. And then the strength is from the keratin. And this upper layer, so any cornea, corneum is upper, it's a stratum, corneum is the upper layer. And up here, the, um, the number of layers depends, but here dead cells would be sloughing off as any abrasion. So when I go like this on my arm, I just lost a whole bunch of cells on the stratum corneum layer of my epidermis, but it's okay. New cells are moving up from underneath and replacing those cells as they come off. A lot of the dust in your house is your uh, dead skin cells. Dead skin cells. I'm sorry if that makes you uneasy. And then here I mentioned we talk about pigmentation for a moment. So these melanocytes produce these things called melanosomes, which get packaged into cells, and then these keratinocytes get more melanin deposited in them as a result. And here for a darker skin, darker skin just means a higher amount of melanin production, whereas lighter skin is a lower amount of melanin production. There are also different types of melanin, um, like there's pheomelanin and so forth, which, you know, red or lighter colored. Uh, same melanin is then used for hair color and so forth. So it all just varies. There is some genetics behind it for the amount of melanin production and also the type of melanin that's produced as well. We're not going to get too crazy into it, but I always get the question on what causes the different skin colors. And then like moles are local accumulations of melanin. You want to make sure you pay attention to your moles as well. Uh, follow that A, B, C, D, E rule and, you know, so mole size, shape and things like that, making sure it doesn't link to melanoma, which is a cancer of the melanosomes. The other skin cancers are um, squamous cell carcinoma and also basal cell carcinoma. So a couple of cancers can show themselves in this epidermal layer or the skin itself. All right, now we get to the dermis and the hypodermis. The dermis, the layer below the skin, is broken up into two layers. It's almost like there's a layer right here, but everything down here is then the dermis. Um, up here are the dermal papillae, which are these little finger-like projections that come up, and there are blood vessels in there that then feed the underlying skin. This is called the papillary layer in the dermal papillae, and this is loose areolar connective tissue. Below that is called the reticular layer, and this is dense irregular connective tissue. Um, so it's a more of a denser tissue. And there's still ground substance, blood vessels, sensory nerves. Um, this is where the glands are and things like that are found down in this layer. And then the hypodermis is the layer be beneath that. So if we label the layers here on this skin model, we have the epidermis, of course, is the upper layer from there to there. And then we have the dermis is the next layer coming down. So from there down to there. And then the fat layer is in the hypodermis down here. The fat layer has adipose tissue in it. So adipose tissue would be fat cells and storage and whatnot. And then also not shown on this would be the breakup in the dermis. So the upper layer of the dermis here would technically be the papillary layer. And then the next layer down would be the reticular layer. Now, what else are we looking at here? Well, we have the layers within the epidermis itself. Um, the base layer down here or the stratum basale is where you're giving rise to new keratinocytes that are moving on up. And then the next layer right here, a bigger layer, this one's that stratum spinosum. And then that purple layer has that staining to it. This is the stratum granulosum. And then this is also an example of thick skin. So this is stratum lucidum. And then we have the upper layer, which is stratum corneum. So there we have all the layers of the of the epidermis. In here, we have a hair shaft sticking out, and this one has a, a shaft missing. So it's called the shaft on where it exits. And then here, it is called the follicle. So the follicle then comes in to the skin. Now we're not gonna go, there are different layers that then surround that hair follicle itself. Down here, you would have the root and the bulb. This is where it gets fed nutrients and grows the hair out, but we're not going to go into all the details of the structure of a hair follicle and the root and whatnot. Um, and then speaking of root down here, this is the root. I labeled it over here on this side. Um, so 
attached to the hair as well is the muscle that causes goosebumps. That's that erector pili muscle. I'm not going to write the words all out right here, but erector pili muscle. And then there are all these finger-like projections that we talked about. These are those dermal uh, papillae or papillae. Uh, or papilla is a singular, papillae is the plural version. So these are all coming up through. And within those, there's a sensory receptor, um, a little sensory receptor found right here. This is called a tactile cell or a misoner's corpuscle. They changed, they're going away from naming all these things after the people that research them. Um, and then the other sensory receptors we have here is the Pacinian corpuscle down here. Um, the Pacinian corpuscle is also known as the lamellar corpuscle. And this is, in, both of these are encapsulated with connective tissue and any touch and pressure compresses that connective tissue, then fires that sensory neuron, which are in yellow. Um, and also around every hair bulb down here, or every hair root, there is free nerve endings. Um, so that's our hair follic, not free nerve endings, but they are free. There are hair follicle receptors down there. Um, so there's, there's hair follicle receptors and any light touch on your hair, you can feel that because these receptors fire. Um, and then I think that's everything I need to say about the hair. Another thing, well, one other thing about the hair are the oil glands. So these oil glands secrete what's called sebum. So these are called um, sebaceous glands. So sebaceous glands here secrete oily-like substances onto the hair follicle, and that helps moisten the hair and keep it healthy. Um, so that only is secreted onto hair. There is another sweat gland down here. This is an eccrine sweat gland, and these, this is one of the pseudor, types of sudoriferous glands and comes out a long duct to then secrete sweat and is part of your thermoregulatory response. Um, there is a sensory nerve that goes to that, well, a nerve that goes to that from your sympathetic nervous system, which is what activates sweat during a fight or flight response and helps cool you down then but this is called an eccrine sweat gland or a sudoriferous gland. The other type of gland that we have that's similar to these sweat glands is called an apocrine gland. And apocrine gl glands don't activate until puberty, then lead to body odor. Like, so they're only found in like the armpits and genital regions. Um, so that's the eccrine sweat glands there. And then down here, this is just a sensory fiber, the yellow fiber running through. I mentioned it earlier, just didn't label it yet. And I think that is all of the labels on this particular skin model. Like I said, it wasn't every single thing on here, but it was a good overview of the different layers of the skin. And this is kind of our gist of our integumentary system. The only thing we didn't really talk about much today was we're Mention the hair a little bit, but also the nails. Uh, your nails are also considered part of the integumentary system. Um, but it's, so nails are kind of similar. It's just a much harder keratin that gets placed into the nails compared to the your hair um, or your skin. And so it still is a keratin production. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have for this little video here covering the integumentary system. So skin is very important, you know, protection from the UV light, protection from abrasion, from cuts, all those sorts of things. Um, and it's really important to protect your skin. A lot of different rashes, ailments, and things going on inside the body display themselves on the skin as well. So if you take a course in microbiology, you would dive into all of the details of that. But that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, just let me know. All right. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.